And I want to, hopefully this will have me and my eight chins. If I like put it up, like maybe I can get just the, um, my pug nose. Okay. Uh, so part 13, lunch with the Buchanans. So when we left, Gatsby had made plans um, to tell Tom and to do all this kind of stuff. Um, but we're going to see the time elapse here, um, what changes on Gatsby's side of um, the sound. It was when curiosity about Gatsby was at its highest that the lights in his house failed to go on one Saturday night. And as obscurely as it had begun, his career as, and I can't pronounce that, but it's someone who like throws lavish parties, was over. Only gradually did I become aware that the automobiles which turned expectantly into his drive stayed for just a minute and then drove sulkily away. Wondering if he were sick, I went over to find out. An unfamiliar butler with a villainous face squinted back at me suspiciously from the door. So he goes over to check on him because it's a Saturday night and there's not a big party. Um, the person who answers the door, he doesn't recognize. Please note what the butler looks like. Villainous face. And he's suspicious. Okay, this is not, you know, a butler is someone who's welcoming and hospitable. This is not that. And he's different from the one that he already had. Is Mr. Gatsby sick? Nope. After a pause, he added, sir, in a dilatory, grudging way. Um, I hadn't seen him around, and I was rather worried. Tell him Mr. Caraway came over. Who? He demanded rudely. Caraway. Caraway, all right, I'll tell him. Abruptly, he slammed the door. So let's make some inferences about that butler. First of all, why is there a new butler, and why does he not really act like a butler? He's probably not a butler. Who do you think he is? Somebody he probably he does business with. Okay. Now think about it. He is in, you know, organized crime. He's, you know, we know this about him. We know that. And so the people we, we've met, Mr. Wolfsheim, we've met and we've heard some things. And so they're not the most um, pleasant and hospitable of people. Definitely suspicious. So him just being there like as a butler um, again, all right, so now what has changed in Gatsby's life where he really needs um, new people? No. Delaney always takes it to like the, yeah, not yet. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what is he doing now? Or um, who is he spending time with now where it doesn't? Yeah. So Daisy is there a lot. Does he need everybody to know this? No. So who's going to keep your secrets the best? your people that you work with that you know they're scared of you or you know what I mean that kind of thing they're not going to talk okay my Finn informed me that Gatsby had dismissed every servant in his house a week ago and replaced them with half a dozen others who never went into West Egg Village to be bribed by the tradesmen but ordered moderate supplies over the telephone the grocery boy reported that the kitchen looked like a pigsty and the general opinion of the village was that the new people weren't servants at all. Okay. So again, they're not even leaving to go. So people can't because money is king, right? They could get newspaper people, you know, they could get information like what, what's the deal? You know, who's Gatsby in the house with, but if they're going to be very loyal and they're not even going to leave. And again, they're not real servants. So they're not cleaning. They're not doing, you know what I mean? Like mm. the next day Gatsby called me on the phone going away. I inquired, no, old sport. I hear you fired all of your servants. I wanted somebody who wouldn't gossip. Daisy comes over quite often in the afternoons. Yeah, she does. <laughs> okay, so mark that. Now we know the reason why his, um, his uh, servants are fired. So the whole caravansary had fallen in like a card house at the disapproval in her eyes. What was she um, disapproving of? Do a Well, not that yet. The party. Like, so all of that. So it just uh, suddenly it stopped because it's not her thing. But again, does he need the parties? No, he has her, right? That was the only reason he had thousands of people at his house every weekend, hoping she would walk in. Now he's got the one that she wants. And she probably said that it's kind of tacky. So, you know, don't do that anymore. Okay. <laughs> 
There are some people that Wolfsheim wanted to do something for. They're all brothers and sisters. They used to run a small hotel. I see. He was calling up at Daisy's request. Would I come to lunch at her house tomorrow? Okay, so figure this out. Gatsby is inviting Nick to Daisy's house for lunch. What are some scenarios? Why? Because picture it. Right now we know it's a Gatsby or Daisy's house. So Daisy and Tom, Gatsby and Nick eating lunch at the Buchanan's. Why? Yeah, so it's like maybe um, uh, just kind of a, so Tom won't like know that kind of stuff and it, it, it'll look normal if Nick, you know, but, but the fact that Gatsby is inviting. Okay, so keep this in mind. Ms. Baker would be there. Okay, so now, you know, um, he's got a date, quote unquote. Um, half an hour later, Daisy herself telephoned and seemed relieved to find out that I was coming. Something was up. And yet I couldn't believe that they would choose this occasion for a scene, especially for the rather harrowing scene that Gatsby had outlined in the garden. So Nick determines that what's this lunch for? To tell Tom. And again, um, Nick doesn't want to be there, but I'm glad he is because we wouldn't know. So Nick's kind of like, this is happening. And Jordan, and I have to be there. What? Okay. So mark this, that line right there for, um, especially for the rather harrowing scene that Gatsby had outlined in the garden. This is why they're going to be eating lunch together tomorrow so that they can tell Tom that they are together that Daisy's leaving Tom and that Daisy never loved Tom. The next day was broiling, almost the last, certainly the warmest of summer. Okay, so weather as a symbol, mark this. Remember before when things were confused or when things were um, off, it was raining. Now y'all, it's incredibly hot, very, very uncomfortable. And y'all live in a place where it gets very, very uncomfortable when it's hot. Well, in New York, especially in this place, right, there's no, there's not a breeze, right? At least we get a breeze off the ocean sometimes. Um, here, it's just hot. And so um, it's just sweat, okay? And again, we don't know what's going to happen at this lunch. Definitely not every single person there is going to walk away pleased, right? So Fitzgerald is using this, okay, trying to put his reader just as uncomfortable as the rest of them, right? Um, as my train emerged from the tunnel into sunlight, only the hot whistles of the National Biscuit Company broke the simmering hush at noon. The straw seats of the car hovered on the edge of combustion. The woman next to me perspired delicately for a while into her white shirt waist. And then as her newspaper dampened under her fingers, lapsed despairingly, uh, despairingly, that word, into a deep heat of desolate cry. Her pocketbook slapped to the floor. Oh my, she gasped. I picked it up with a weary bend and handed it back to her, holding it at arm's length and by the extreme tip of the corners to indicate that I had no designs upon it. But everyone nearby, including the woman, suspected me just the same. Hot, said the conductor to familiar faces. Some weather, hot, hot, hot. Is it hot enough for you? My, um, I can never say the word, the ticket basically, came back to him with a dark stain from his hand. So even that, he just, he hands it and he gives it back and it's sweating. Okay, y'all been this hot. Y'all know about humidity, right? Like I'm just miserable thinking about it, okay? Um, that anyone could care in this um, heat whose flushed lips he kissed, whose head made damp on the pajama pocket over his heart. Through the hall of the Buchanan's house blew a faint wind, carrying the sound of the telephone bell out to Gatsby and me as we waited at the door. The master's body roared the butler into the mouthpiece. I'm sorry, madam, but we can't furnish it. It's far too hot for this uh, this noon. What he really said was, yes, yes, I'll see. He set down the receiver and came toward us, glistening slightly to take off our straw hats. The glistening slightly is obviously um, sweat, right? Madam expects you in the salon, he cried, needlessly indicating the direction. In this heat, every extra gesture was an affront to the common store of life. The room shadowed well with awnings, was dark and cool. Daisy and Jordan lay upon an enormous couch like silver idols weighing down their own white dresses against the singing breeze of the fans. We can't move, 
they cried together. Jordan's fingers, powdered white over their tan, rested for a moment in mine. And Mr. Thomas Buchanan, the athlete, I inquired. Simultaneously, I heard his, gr his voice, gruff, muffled, husky at the hall telephone. Gatsby stood in the center of the crimson carpet and gazed around with fascinated eyes. He's never been into Daisy's house. Okay, so he's in Daisy's house and he's getting this glimpse of how she lives. Daisy watched him and laughed her sweet, exciting laugh. A tiny gust of powder rose from her bosom into the air. The rumor is, whispered Jordan, that that's Tom's girl on the telephone. We were silent. The voice in the hall rose high with annoyance. Very well then, I won't sell you the car after all. I'm under no obligations to you at all. And as far as you're bothering me about it at lunchtime, I won't stand for that at all. Who does it sound like he's talking to? Myrtle's husband, right? Because remember that's the, remember there is no car. He just uses that excuse to go and see Myrtle. But now it sounds like he's calling that um, George is calling and it's like, dude, I need that car. I need, you know, this like for money. Basically he's going to use it for like scrap or whatever. And, but he needs money. And, um, and so Daisy hears this and just assumes holding down the receiver. Like he's not really, he's talking to the girl. Said Daisy cynically. No, he's not. I assured her it's a bona fide deal. I happen to know about it. And again, Nick's not lying. He just really thought there was a car. You know what I mean? Tom flung open the door blocked out its space for a moment with its thick, his thick body hurried into the room. Mr. Gatsby, he put out his broad, flat hand with well-concealed dislike. I'm glad to see you, sir. Nick, make us a cold drink, cried Daisy. As he left the room again, she got up, went over to Gatsby, pulled his face down, kissing him on the mouth. Y'all. Like he's in here and he just walked out. So it's not like he like went to the store or he went down to the cellar to get, you know what I mean? Like, and so she's feeling very um, safe at the moment, probably a little bit bolstered up by the fact that if she thinks he was talking to his girlfriend on the phone. So if he's going to talk to his girlfriend, I'm going to kiss my boyfriend right here, you know? So she does it right here. Meanwhile, Nick and um, Jordan are like, you know, like I would be like, dude, can you not? Like, you know, I love you. She murmured. You forget there's a lady present, said Jordan. Daisy looked around doubtfully. You kiss Nick too. What a low, vulgar girl. I don't care, cried Daisy, and began to clog on the brick fireplace. Then she remembered the heat and sat down guiltily on the couch, just as a freshly laundered nurse leading a little girl came into the room. Blessed precious, she crooned, holding out her arms. Come to your own mother who, that loves you. The child, relinquished by the nurse, rushed across the room and rooted shyly into her mother's dress. The blessed precious. Did mother get powder on your old yellowy hair? Stand up now. Say how you do. Gatsby and I, in turn, leaned down and took the small, reluctant hand. Afterwards, he kept looking at the child with surprise. I don't think he had ever really believed in its existence before. Mark that. This is kind of a turning point. He can hear all day long that you have a kid, right? You can hear all day long that, you know, you have a kid with Tom, that kind of thing. But he's just met her and he looks at her. There's an actual physical being, a bond between the man that he doesn't want her to have a bond with. Okay, so he's just kind of like, and again, it's all kind of. I got dressed before luncheon, cried the child, turning, uh, so the child turning eagerly to Daisy. That's because your mother wanted to show you off. Her face bent into the single wrinkle of the small white neck. You dream, you. You absolute little dream. Yes, admitted the child calmly. Aunt Jordan's got on a white dress, too. How do you like mother's friends? Daisy turned uh, her around so that she faced Gatsby. Do you think they're pretty? Where's daddy? She doesn't look like her father, explained Daisy. She looks like me. She's got my hair in the shape of my face. Daisy sat back on the couch. The nurse took a step forward and held out her hand. Come, Pammy. Goodbye, sweetheart. With a reluctant backward glance, the well-disciplined child held to her nurse's hand and was pulled out the door just as Tom came back, preceding four gin rickies that clicked full of ice. So literally, y'all, she, I mean, she says it. I want to show you off. Like she got her all dressed up and then it's like, okay, you said it. So now go. She's not very motherly, right? She's not like going to pick her up and like, because that might get her dress, you know, like wrinkled. 
Um, and also it's the child's like three maybe. Um, and so like, she might drool on her, you know, she might get her dirty, you know? So she's just like, and the child knows it too. The, the nurse holds out her hand. She goes with her, you know what I mean? So it's very, I don't know. Think about like toddlers, you know, and their parents, you're like all about, you know what I mean? And Tom doesn't even really acknowledge, you know what I mean? Okay. Makes me sad. Um, so he comes in and Jen Rickies are obviously, um, drinks. Um, and so into this situation, it's already hot. We're uncomfortable. We know why they're there. Do we need to add alcohol? But are we gonna? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gatsby took up his drink. They certainly look cool, he said, with visible tension. We drank in long, greedy swallows. I read somewhere that the sun's getting hotter every year, said Tom genially. It seems that pretty soon the earth's going to fall into the sun. Now, wait a minute. It's just the opposite. The sun's getting colder every year. Come outside, he suggested to Gatsby. I'd like you to have a look at the place. I went out with him to the veranda. On the green sound, stagnant in the heat, one small sail crawled slowly toward the fresher sea. Gatsby's eyes followed it moment momentarily. He raised his hand and pointed across the bay. I'm right across from you. So you are. Our eyes lifted over the rose beds and the hot lawn and the weedy refuse of the dog days along shore. Slowly, the white wings of the boat moved against the blue, cool limit of the sky. Ahead lay the scalloped ocean and the abounding Blessed Isles. There's sport for you, said Tom, nodding. I'd like to be out there with him for about an hour. We had luncheon in the dining room, darkened too against the heat and drank down um, nervous gaiety with cold ale. More alcohol. But it's hot. They had to, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what they're like. I'm hot. I'm like, there's water. Um, there's tea. You know, like, think about, you know, there's grape Kool-Aid. Sorry. Just, just my house. Um, what do we do with ourselves this afternoon? Cried Daisy. And the day after that. And, and the next 30 years. Don't be morbid, Jordan said. Life starts all over again when it gets crisp in the fall. But it's so hot, insisted Daisy on the verge of tears. And everything's so confused. Let's go to town. Her voice struggled on through the heat, beating against it, molding its senselessness into forms. I've heard of making a garage out of a stable, Tom was saying to Gatsby, but I'm the first man to ever make a stable out of a garage. Who wants to go to town? demanded Daisy insistently. Gatsby's eyes floated toward her. Ah, she cried. You look so cool. Their eyes met. And they stared at each other, and they stared together at each other alone in space. With an effort, she glanced down at the table. You always look so cool, she repeated. Has she messed up? Have they messed up? Like they're like caught eyes, and it kind of just stayed there for a minute. And then she has to like literally make herself look down. This next line is everything. She had told him that she loved him, and Tom Buchanan saw. He was astounded. So mark those two lines. She um, didn't mean to do it like this, but definitely, um, yeah. And the fact that he, I mean, at least that's something for him that he picked up on it. He, you know, stepped outside of himself for a moment. Um, and again, he's astounded. He never, that was never part of, he never thought that that would happen. He never, I mean, she, you, nobody's gonna cheat on me, Tom Buchanan. His mouth opened a little and he looked at Gatsby and then back at Daisy as if he had just recognized her as someone he knew a long time ago. You resemble the advertisement of a man, she went on innocently. Um, the, you know, the advertisement of the man. All right, broke in Tom quickly. I'm perfectly willing to go to town. Come on, we're all going to town. So before he wasn't, but now why does he need to get them out of this space? And maybe the idea that they need to be separated. Think about it. Like maybe I, he doesn't know why they're here and what's going on, but he does know there's something going on. And if they've planned to bombard him in his own home, like maybe he can do something. You know what I mean? Like maybe we can change the scenery. Yeah. He got up, his eyes still flashing between Gatsby and his wife. No one moved. Come on. His temper cracked a little. What's the matter anyhow? If we're going to town, let's start. His hand trembling with an effort at self-control bore to his lips the last of his glass of ale. 
Daisy's voice got us to our feet and out to the blazing gravel drive. Are we just going to go? She objected. Like this? Aren't, we, aren't you going to let anybody have a smoke a cigarette first? Everybody smoked all through lunch. Oh, let's have fun, she begged him. It's too hot to fuss. He didn't answer. Have it your way, she said. Come on, Jordan. They went upstairs to get ready while the three men stood there shuffling the hot pebbles with our feet. A silver curve of the moon hovered already in the western sky. Gatsby started to speak, changed his mind, but not before Tom wheeled and faced him expectantly. Okay, so right now, Nick is the one that noticed that Tom noticed. Does Gatsby have any idea that Tom noticed? No. So Gatsby's just kind of like, you know, like it's still going to happen. You know, he's very kind of oblivious. But Nick knows, and obviously Tom knows. Okay? So keep that in mind. Gatsby's, if he did notice, he probably wouldn't play it the way he's playing it. Okay. Have you got your stables here? Asked Gatsby with an effort, about a quarter of a mile down the road. Oh, a pause. I don't see the idea of going to town, broke out Tom savagely. Women get these notions in their heads. Shall we take anything to drink? Called Daisy from an upper window. I'll get some whiskey, answered Tom. He went inside. Gatsby turned to me rigidly. I can't say anything in his household sport. And I get that, right? I mean, it's bad enough that you're sleeping with his wife, but to bombard him or to like, you know, and, and like to ambush him in his house. So now Gatsby's thinking, okay, this is a good idea. Let's go to town and then we can tell him like somewhere else. Okay. Um, she's got a, um, an indiscreet voice. I remarked it's full of, I hesitated. Her voice is full of money. He said suddenly that was it. I never understood it before. It was full of money. That was the inexhaustible charm that rose and fell in it, the jingle of it, the symbol song of it, high in a white palace, the king's daughter, the golden girl. Okay, so that stops um, part 14. Okay, no, sorry, part 13. Sorry, stops part 13. So I need to stop this and make a new recording. Hold tight.